Hello everyone, Chaos here and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my Corrupted Gauntlet Guide. The Corrupted Gauntlet is a solo boss encounter with the two main phases, preparation and then the final boss fight. During the preparation phase you will gather resources throughout a randomly generated dungeon to make your own weapons, armor, food and potions in order to fight the big scary boss at the end, the Corrupted Hunleth. This is by far one of the most difficult PVM activities in the game, and once you get comfortable here, any other challenge will be a breeze. If you guys enjoyed today's upload, a subscription with notifications on and a like would be really appreciated. And don't forget to join the Discord to interact with our amazing community, and in case you have any further questions. Before we continue, I have an extremely important disclaimer for you guys, and it is that due to the nature of this activity and given how random it can be, I will give you general advice for it that worked for me, but remember that there are a ton of strategies you can follow, especially for the Corrupted Gauntlet. Once you're comfortable beating the final boss, you can mix and match strategies according to your needs to have more efficient runs and get those enhanced crystal weapon seeds. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to my friends Sherb and Jake for helping out with this video. The guide you're about to watch was built around the advice they gave me, and after fixing a few mistakes based on their help, I can now get a full run pretty much on command, where as before, it would literally be a coin toss. And, poor Rusty, don't just keep trying blindly, don't be afraid to ask for any advice. So with that being said, let's begin. So, first things first, what are the requirements for the Corrupted Gauntlet? You will need two crucial things, completion of the quest Song of the Elves, and one normal gauntlet completion. If you're watching this video, I am going to assume you already have both, but if you haven't already beaten the normal Hunleth, you can apply the tips you learn in this video to get that done as well, and then start grinding the harder version of this challenge. We now move on to levels, gear, and inventory. Song of the Elves doesn't have any particular combat level requirements, but I would say you need a minimum of base 80 combat stats. And if you want to have a slightly better time, get at least level 90s for quicker kills. If you have a Rigor and Augury unlocked, you will need a minimum of level 77 prayer. But without them, level 70 will do just fine to make use of piety in case you use melee. Song of the Elves requires 70 agility for full completion, but anything above level 80 will be perfect, as there is a lot of running around and you need as much run energy as possible. We will go over gear quickly because, well, you really don't need anything to come here. Every item you use in the Corrupted Gauntlet will be made inside, so you don't really need to have anything on you. You can wear anything you want, but once you enter, you will be stripped away of everything on you, and you will have everything back once you are outside. Same goes for your inventory. Technically speaking, you also don't need anything, but I would recommend having a teleport near a bank just in case when you are done with your session. And if you plan on staying here for longer periods of time, keeping nature and the fire runes on you would be nice to high alk all of your loot after every kill. So how do you get here? This activity is obviously inside the crystal city of elves called Prithinus, and you can find the entrance of the gauntlet on the northwest corner of the area. Click on this big blue portal and you will find yourself inside the lobby. A few things to note here is that by clicking on the central platform, you will be taken back to Prifinus. The platform next to the northern wall is the actual entrance to the gauntlet. On the eastern part of the room, we have both a deposit box in case you want to bank your items, and also a notice board for you to see information such as your normal and the corrupted gauntlet completions. And also personal best times as well as global statistics for the same numbers. Last but not least, you can find the rewards chest on the western wall, which you will be able to loot after each run. Killing either version of the gauntlet will give you access to the good drops, but if you're killed during the final fight, you can still open the chest, however, the items you get for this are almost like a kick in the teeth from Jagex telling you to get good. Also, in case you want to learn more about this activity before going inside, the southern wall has two books you can click to look at how to make potions and the materials needed to make every item inside. Now that you're familiar with the starting room, let's continue. For those of you who are using Runelight, I highly recommend installing a plugin simply called the Gauntlet. With it, you can highlight resources, mark the outlines of monsters, keep track of your resources, and much more. I highly recommend it to know what you need to collect at all times, just so you don't get distracted from your current goal. I also recommend a plugin called Tile Indicators to know where your character is and where it is going, although personally, I don't use it. But it will be very helpful during the boss fight. NPC Indicators is also helpful to highlight monsters inside, but the Gauntlet plugin will already do that for you. Explore these plugins carefully to know what they have to offer, so you can do this activity much smoother. Alright, we're almost there. Before jumping in, let's go over everything you need to do during your run. Once inside, you will be placed in the resource room which is right next to the Hunleth to get ready for the fight. This room has the following utilities. A singing bowl for you to create your items, a teleport platform in case you want to leave, 
a centerpiece you can click in order to retrieve tools such as a pickaxe or an axe, just in case you drop them, a cooking range to, well, obviously cook your fish, and finally a faucet to fill your vials of water. We also have the same recipe books you can find in the lobby, but I highly recommend not reading them here as to not waste any time. If you click on this icon on the bottom right corner of your minimap, you will be able to see the dungeon map. It is a 7x7 floor and the corrupted hunleft will always be in the middle. The resource room will always be connected to the hunleft, so no need to panic during your final preparations as it's only a few tiles away. You will be wearing an item called the Corrupted Scepter. You will need this item to advance through the dungeon as you click on the walls leading to the corridors of the rooms and lighting them up to reveal what's in them. This is also your initial weapon which is somewhat of a maze and attacks every 5 ticks. On your inventory you will be able to find an axe, a pickaxe, a harpoon, a pestle and mortar and finally a teleport seed. The first three items will be used to gather resources, the pestle and mortar will be used to crush shards to create dust for your potions, and the teleport seed is a one-click teleport back to the resource room. You can make additional ones for 40 shards, and if you are lucky, monsters will be able to drop them too. Inside the rooms you will find the following. Lower tier monsters being rats, spiders and bats. Mid tier monsters being unicorns, scorpions and wolves in that order of strength. And finally, higher tier monsters or demi-bosses being bears, dark beasts and dragons. We'll go over demi-bosses in more detail in a little bit. Along with monsters, you may also find resources in the rooms being trees, plants, rocks, pools of fish and finally herb patches. Trees will give you bark, rocks will give you ore, plants will give you linium which kinda looks like wool and pools of fish will give you paddlefish. You will need the first three to create armor and the fish will obviously be used on the range to use as your healing items. Herb patches will yield one grime leaf to create potions, which we'll, we'll also go over in a little bit. Now that we know everything we can find in the rooms, let's cover them in slightly greater detail and then we will go over a general starting route. All monsters can drop fish, grime leaves, teleport seeds, and most importantly, corrupted shards. Lower tier monsters, however, will have a chance of dropping an item called a weapon frame. If you kill two and you don't already have one, the third lower tier monster you kill will drop one guaranteed for you to make your first weapon, which we will also go over in a little bit. The mid tier monsters are obviously stronger, but will have a guaranteed weapon frame drop if you don't have one already. They will also drop more shards than lower tier monsters, so it's a great source of shards if you are short on them to create items. Both the low and the mid tier monsters all attack with melee, so praying against this style will have you cover 100% of the time. The high tier monsters, also known as demi-bosses, are the strongest monsters apart from the corrupted Hunleth, and they each attack with a specific style. The bear attacks with melee, the dark beast attacks with ranged, and the dragon attacks with magic. Once defeated, they will drop a higher number of shards, a guaranteed weapon frame, and respectively they will drop a spike, a bowstring, and an orb. These items will be used to upgrade our weapons to tier 3 and are pretty much mandatory for efficient gauntlet runs. If you kill a dark beast, for example, it will have a guaranteed bowstring drop. However, if you kill another dark beast, it will have a 50-50 chance of dropping either a spike or an orb. Once you obtain the second item, if you happen to kill a third demi boss, it will drop the last item you need. A super useful tip I learned in preparation for this guide is that you can use the pestle and mortar on any of these items to convert them into 80 shards, just in case you are running short on them. And finally, the demi bosses may only appear in these rooms on the outer layer of the dungeon. However, it's not guaranteed to happen. You may not find any demi boss on these three consecutive rooms, or you may find all three of them, but it's really a coin flip. For your first few runs, I highly recommend you focus on the Dark Beast and the Dragon, as the bow and staff will be super useful to learn how to move and attack from a distance. Once you are comfortable with long ranged attacks, you may try the Halberd for slightly better DPS. However, keep in mind that this has a range of two tiles and using it without too much experience may put you in danger sometimes. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much all there is to learn before we jump into an actual run and a starting route. Like I said at the very beginning of the video, due to the random nature of this activity, this opening strategy is what I personally do and I am comfortable with, so give it a try and then fix anything you may find inconvenient for better runs. However, you will find that there is plenty of time for you to do everything you see in this example and part of the challenge is doing it faster and faster after every attempt. Once inside, you will have 7.5 minutes to prepare, and the boss fight can technically go on indefinitely or until either of you are defeated. Start by going to either of the rooms adjacent to the Hunleth, and then do a loop like this in order to see if you find any demi-bosses. On your way there, your first goal is to gather the following items. 7 Bark, 7 Ore, 7 Linium, 1 Herb, one weapon frame and a minimum of 100 shards, which you will most likely have by the time you collect them all. 
Keep in mind that you may not find all of the materials on your first loop, and you will have to look for more on your way back to the resource room. Each resource spot will yield 3 materials, so you need to fully deplete 2 and only grab 1 material from an extra spot for a total of 7. Once you have 7 bark and ore, you may drop the axe and the pickaxe respectively. While running around, you should also look for 1 grime leaf and kill a maximum of 3 lower tier monsters for a guaranteed weapon frame. If you get lucky and are able to collect all of the resources quickly, your inventory should look like this before heading to the resource room. 21 spots for the 3 types of materials, a grime leaf, a weapon frame, pestle and mortar, harpoon, and finally all of your shards for a total of 26 item slots. Before going back, you should check these 3 rooms on the outer edges of the dungeon on the route you decided to take for any demi bosses. Ideally, you want at least two of them, but if you only find one being either the Dark Beast or the Dragon, you can go back to kill them and loot their items, or you can try your luck at another group of three rooms. Anyway, demi-bosses or not, you may run back to the resource room or teleport back with your seed, and drop all of your materials next to the singing bowl since you may not have enough crystals to create a full set of tier 2 armor. Once dropped, make a tier 2 weapon and a vial. The weapon should be the one, according to a demi-boss you found, to fully upgrade that tier 2 weapon as soon as possible. Anyway, crush one set of shards with your pestle and mortar, fill your vial at the faucet, use a grime leaf on the vial of water, and finally, add the crushed shards to create an egg nail potion, which works as a prayer and stamina potion and you may use it when low on energy. Once done, it's time to go for the second trip. For this, you have four objectives. If you haven't already, find the demi-bosses according to the weapons you want. Collect a maximum of 400 shards, and for your first few runs, collect as much fish as possible. Finally, aim for a second grime leaf on your way to those resources. I say 400 shards because we have already used 80 for a tier 2 weapon, and 20 for both a vial and a dust. The other 400 shards will be used for a set of tier 2 armor which costs 300, another tier 2 weapon which also costs 80, and a final potion which costs 20, so in total we are looking at 500 shards for the entire run. So, with these objectives in mind, time to go to the outer edges of the dungeon, remember that you can only find the demi-bosses in these three rooms, and defeat them for their special loot. On your way to them, you should also catch as much fish as you're able to carry, and in my case, I now only go for 12 because I make barely any mistakes during the fight, and only take damage from the Hunleth while praying. Once you have done a little tour and found the two demi-bosses, again, preferably the Dark Beast and the Dragon, caught fish and gathered at least 400 extra shards, it is time to go back and prepare. Run back to the resource room or use your teleport seed if you have it, remembering that you can make an extra one for 40 shards if you really have to. Don't forget that extra grime leaf for another potion, and if you need to, a third potion will come in handy, remembering that you need 20 more shards for an extra one. Cook all your fish and then drop them on the ground, and then take all of your materials to go to the singing bowl. You should make tier 1 armor, then tier 2 armor, perfect your tier 2 weapon, and create another weapon according to the second demi-boss you drop and fully upgrade it right away. Along with it, make one more vial, and finally crush a set of shards to make more dust. Go to the faucet and fill your vial with water, use the grime leaf on it, and finally add dust in order to create a second egg null potion. You should have your tier 2 armor and the tier 3 weapon equipped, and in your inventory you should have your second tier 3 weapon, 2 or 3 egg null potions, and as much food as you see fit. Once ready, it is time to face the Corrupted Hunleth. Now, truth be told, there are so many things to keep track of that you shouldn't feel bad for failing many times before you get your first KC. Hell, it took me 8 attempts to get my first one, and consecutive attempts were still very, very difficult. So, before anything, remember to be patient and learn from your mistakes. Before going in there, I recommend setting up your F keys to at least your inventory and your prayers, since you will be cycling through them for the entire fight. Also, you can use the center mouse key in order to move the camera with your mouse. When going inside, pray ranged and also activate whatever boosting prayer to go along with your weapon. Obviously, not attacking with what the Hunlev is praying against. He will be able to hit you with both ranged and magic, and will always start the fight with its ranged attack, which will look like little spikes. It is important to mention that if you step under the Hunlev, it will stomp on you, dealing massive unavoidable damage, so no walking under to save up. After 4 hits, it will switch attack styles and the magic hits look like little balls. When attacking with magic, it can throw a purple orb at you, which will turn off your prayers. If you are wearing tier 2 armor, its max hit through prayer will be 10. After you hit 5 times, it will switch prayers and you will need to swap your weapons. That's pretty much it about how to damage and avoid being damaged. Simple, right? Well, things aren't as easy and difficulty ramps up incredibly quickly. Here's what to look forward to in order of importance. As you will notice, the floor will change colors every now and then. 
In the Corrupted Gauntlet, red tiles are safe, light red tiles are about to change, and orange tiles will damage you if you're stepping on them. So always keep track of where you are standing. At random points of the fight, the Hunlift will summon tornadoes to chase after you. You can tank maybe one or two if you make a mistake, but in later stages of the fight, if all of them stack together and reach you, chances are you're gonna get one hit regardless of your HP. Juggling safe tiles along with tornadoes are what make this absolutely nerve-wracking. So, when putting everything together, you will have to pray correctly, wear the adequate weapon to damage it, move around to avoid the dangerous tiles, and also run around the room to prevent the tornadoes from reaching you and attack whenever you are safe. I know, I know it's easier said than done, which is why we have a few extra tips to make your life easier. Technically, the fight is divided in three phases. From full HP to 667, from 666 to 334 HP, and from 333 to 0 HP. It's a lot better to look at it in thirds, but you get the point. During the first health phase, only two tornadoes will spawn. During the second one, three will be there, and of course, during the last phase, four tornadoes will appear instead. The floor patterns also change during the different phases, but the most important thing to note is that during the last phase, these highlighted tiles are safe and you can stay here to attack without moving, making the final part of the fight slightly easier in terms of movement. I also recommend eating as you run away from the tornadoes, because on your first few runs it's much better to stay safe rather than trying to attack, which can easily get you killed if the tornadoes catch up to you. So, take this time to save up and not waste any time whenever there are no tornadoes around you. Boys and girls, that's pretty much it about the final fight. Now, like I said before, it's easier said than done, which is why just for this guide, I will do what I did for my Inferno video, and I will give you a set of steps and checkpoints for you to know that progress is actually being done. And also, so you don't get discouraged if it takes multiple attempts to get your first KC. 1. You should aim to get both your tier 3 weapons. Worst case scenario, if you can't make the armor, at least you can head into the boss room to start getting used to its mechanics and deal a little bit of damage. 2. When you can get your weapons in time, it is time to focus on tier 2 armor. Try gathering 7 of each materials as fast as possible and bringing them back to the resource room to then craft into your items. This also includes fish and herbs. 3. Get comfortable with prayer switches since the longer you survive, the more damage you can deal and make progress. 4. Learn when to switch weapons and also pay attention to the Hunlift's animations, as it will howl every time he uses a different attack style. 5. Learn where to stand to stay safe. It doesn't matter if you only focus on this with the correct protection prayer, as the dangerous floor tiles will damage you even quicker than the Hunlift, and you will die in a matter of seconds. 6. Learn to run away from the tornadoes on the safe tiles, judging where to go so you also don't step under the Hunlift. This is the last thing you should get used to, and once you master all of these steps, getting your first KC is only a matter of time. If you guys want to see a full commentated kill for both the normal and the corrupted gauntlet, you can check out the links in the description for you to hear what I'm thinking as I am going through a full run. As adding it on this video would make it way too long, and honestly would make it upwards of like 30 minutes. I will do this for future bosses, as most kills aren't really that lengthy, but you know, just for this one will suffice. Well, that's pretty much it about the final fight. But, as I always do for these guides, here's an extra set of tips that will help you get more efficient and achieve faster kills. Some people find it useful to be on the Lunar Spellbook with Vengeance spells, and not take damage through the entire dungeon to save that nice recoil hit for the Hunlift fight. Might be worth doing if you're looking for faster kills, eh, but a little inconvenient. You can try unequipping the Scepter and either punch or kick monsters to death, since doing so will be one tick faster per attack cycle than wearing the Scepter, but again, only do this on lower tier monsters. There's a way for you to attack monsters and gather resources in quick succession. You must click on the NPC and then quickly spam their resource spot for a little bit until you see the XP drop. Doing this is fairly helpful, but it requires decent timing, and with my Mexican internet, it's never really consistent. When running around the dungeon, you may also save some ticks by preparing potions since you can do that on the go. Remember that you can also use your vials on fishing spots in order to fill them up, and then create your potion while running. When wearing no armor, the Hunlift can max a 16 through prayer. With a full set of tier 1 armor, this max hit goes down to 13, and with a full tier 2 and a tier 3 armor respectively, max hit goes down to 10 and 8. And speaking of armor, remember that tier 2 equipment is great for more consistent attempts, and when you're more confident to try for faster runs, tier 1 armor should do, but you may need a lot more fish. Take this from me, since before learning tier 2 armor method, when preparing for a full inventory of fish and 3 potions was still a coin toss because of just how much damage I was taking. Same goes for fish. Once you are more confident during the final fight, looking for less fish will save a lot of ticks. 
As of the time of making this video, I personally go for 12 fish, but I find that 8 is more than enough since I adhere to armor is amazing. Of course, these are just a few tips for you to try after your first runs, and if there's anything I'm missing, make sure to post it in the comments down below, so we can all learn more about this great activity together. And now, for what you boys and girls have been waiting for. What can you get out of the Corrupted Gauntlet? The normal one isn't really worth it because all the uniques have reduced the drop rate, which is why I will focus on the harder version. According to the wiki and at the time of making this video, the average loot drop is worth around 77k without uniques. With these cringe numbers and with 6 runs per hour, you can expect an average of 462 per hour, although in my experience this is a lot higher than normal or maybe I just got lucky with the normal drops. Also you have a 1 in 20 chance of getting an elite clue scroll, a 1 in 50 chance of obtaining both a weapon and an armor seed, and the most sought after drop in this place, a 1 in 400 chance for an enhanced crystal weapon seed worth almost 150 million GP. Of course again, after the time of making this video. And finally, the pet which has a 1 in 800 chance of popping out when you open the chest. And of course, of course, again, I have to flex the fact that I got one at 31kc. Sorry, Iron Man out there, I know you hate me, but... You know, it just happens. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed and that you learned something useful. I want to give a massive shout out to all my channel members. You boys and girls are absolutely amazing and your support goes a long way. If you want to support this channel further, you can click the join button below to see all of the cool perks and rewards you can get out of your monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course, in the Discord. Thank you so much for watching, and in the next one, we will go over arguably my favorite boss and currently the most consistent boss to farm GP, Vorkav the Money Dragon. I hope you have an amazing week, and I'll see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.